things in your life are happening right now, Burton. Uh, congratulations are in order. You're a, a brand new groom. Yes. You're a Look husband. At that. Look huh? at that. Congratulations to you. Six weeks. Six weeks. Six weeks. You're still on your honeymoon, huh? There, there was no honeymoon. I'm we, sorry. Uh, we got married in the middle of a tour, and I had two days off. So one afternoon we went to the city hall, and the next day we just watch TV, and then the following day we were back on tour. So I had a two-day break to get married. You watched TV on your honeymoon? Huh? Yeah. Well, it was only a day, you know. Ah. Never ah. mind, Merv, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody talked to you about the birds and the bees? No, that? no. Well, in the middle of a tour, there's no time for uh, that. You, you, know. you do lo like tours, don't you, Bert? I do, yes. I like You the like road. being out on the road. I, I enjoy... And does your wife enjoy being on the road with the, she, she with does. the steam iron? Believe it. No, no, we have guys to do all that for us. She loves the road. Room service is killing me. Yeah. You know, it's very easy to dial for stuff and have it all brought to the room. It's, yeah. it's good. I, I enjoy the lack of responsibility on the road. There are people to do everything for me except sing and play. It's much easier than being at home. I never thought of that. Right. Should we go on the road, Cal? Sure. I don't know. You know, I've, and I've read a lot of interviews with, with prominent musicians in the pop field, per se, and I get sick and tired of hearing them whine about the road. The road is part of the business. It's part of the game. And uh, if, if they don't enjoy it, then they should do, do learn... something else, you know? Yeah. Do you learn a lot of musical things on the road? Does an audience kick you into... Um space where you start trying things and oh, finding absolutely. new sounds it's a, it's a di in in uh, a, a tour of one nighters when you're playing in a different city and to a different set of people every night you have to roll with it it's different every day it's yeah. great you know there are more receptive people in some places and, and less so in others and uh, you constantly have to flex your musical muscles not just the playing you know we all know the songs and we all know the set but you also have to gear yourself for individual audiences as the nights change it's it's never the same that's what i like yeah. you have to try harder some nights and other nights it's easier you're now living in los angeles mm -hmm. you're originally yes. from uh, canada from canada yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah enjoying our life here i like it here very much yeah. yes indeed uh, it, uh, did we misinterpret the big hit you had with the guess who called uh, the american woman uh, it's it like a healthy disrespect for the american it, women Th that that song was was so huge and I think probably for for some of the wrong reasons it was a bit misinterpreted it, it came out in 1970 the Vietnam War was at a particularly bad point of escalation at that point so people read political inferences into it they also took it as an anti-feminist jab um, none of these things were true we jammed it on stage one night the guys were, were doing this riff and I just opened my mouth and the lyrics that came out were were what happened what stayed and a young kid was recording the concert with a little cassette machine and he brought the tape back later and had we never heard that tape the record never would have been it was it was Did it was you not find a... that little kid oh, and no. make him rich for the rest of his life <laughs> <laughs> we, we grabbed the tape immediately and we told him you can't be doing that kind of stuff yeah, get out of here kid sure. right <laughs> at their home, yeah. but it wasn't really uh, people thought that, that the american woman was the statue of liberty and stuff like that and it wasn't true it was it was more a pro-Canadian song. We had toured the States on the strength of some big hit records and found myself back in Canada looking at the girls, and they, they looked a little less streamlined. Um, yeah. And I don't mean that as a jab to either country. They just do look a bit different yeah. up north. You know, it's a slower lifestyle. And it was more as if I were saying, um, Canadian woman, come closer. Uh, but what came out of my mouth was American woman, stay away. And oh it, it was a happy accident. <laughs> right. I love this uh, album. And the, and the cover, that's nice. It looks as though you caught somebody in the band hitting a wrong note there <laughs> from the piano. I don't know. Uh, they, there was a, an entire series of these taken one day, and I just grabbed a couple of black and white ones and fired them up. There they were. It's a very unpretentious album cover, you know. It's well, we certainly know who you are, though. From picture the, of old huh? Bert. There it is. You know, it can't get much simpler than that. The first time I picked this up, Bert, and i got to tell you something strange. I thought that was one title. Now, this is how dumb I am. I thought the title of this side was Mother, Keep Your Daughter in Something Old, Something New, because nothing's wrong with the road. Nobody's that dumb, Murph. I am. <laughs> Why did he recall, you know, Mother, Keep Your Daughters in Something Old and Something New? Maybe you could, I guess. Maybe nothing's you wrong. Ran them all together. Right, yeah. You have to have an awful lot to say about nothing, though, to do that. <laughs> I'm dying to hear uh, 
Mother Keep Your Daughters In. What inspired that? A uh, bit of a rocker, a bit of a rocker. It's, uh, you know, the, these wild stories you hear no. about the road. No. Well, you know, I, I hear them sometimes in documentaries. Yeah. And uh, it's What's just... What's the road out there right now, like, for groupies and... It's the same as it always was. Young ones, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same as it always was. There is that element. You have to learn how to deal with it rationally, you know. But uh, it's like any anyone in, in public notoriety anyone anyone in the public eye has has people chasing them you know hockey players baseball players it's it's all the same is but that why you're this warning one, mothers to yeah, keep their it's, daughters it's in? like a humor it's a tongue-in-cheek thing saying uh, mother be careful because if she's over 13 she's probably at a rock concert and just be cool lock her up you know keep her out of trouble yeah do they ever listen is that the new thing of the 80s to listen at the rock concerts oh i think Basically, people go to listen. There, there are a few airheads that just go because there's nothing to do with the music because they're there because it's a social event or to get blasted on 90 different drugs and stuff. But I think basically the audiences are there for the music. I, I remember playing in the old days before the drug culture really hit with a bang and before they had lowered the drinking ages when all it was was 7-ups and Coca-Colas and music. And, and we try and get a bit of that, you know. We, yeah. the, the music should be the magic. It really should. Right. It, was, it was what brought everyone to that stage initially. Want to jump in here and say something about Burton Cummings? Well, he's had a, an extraordinary career. Right. And, of course, up in Canada, he, he's, he's just it. And there is a situation at, of Canadian content, and I wanted to bring that up with Burton, because it's been sensitive with some of the great Canadian artists, such as Burton and Anne Murray in which they have to play, what is it, 33% I think it's Canadian. one out of four, one out of four cuts on the radio has to be by a Canadian artist. So this created a problem with American program directors. They said, well, if you put any garbage on the air in Canada, it's air pollution, and then you tell us it's a hit in Canada. Now, you had all of these stars, Joni Mitchell, Burton Cummings, Anne Murray, who their careers exploded before this Canadian content rule was put through. And then they had to face this stuff, well, you're not a real star, you were manufactured by Canada, and it just wasn't true. So there are many of the, of the real artists in Canada who really don't like this kind of thing because it hurts their credibility with the American program directors. Did you want to comment on that? Burton? To a degree it does, I think. Uh, but I, I, I do see now over a period of eight or nine years, the law has existed, I think, about seven or eight years, and I do see that the end is beginning to justify the means. Although, initially, I thought that it was a bit off base to legislate any art form. That's, if you took it a step further, then you'd have to say, well, one out of every four books you read should be by a Canadian author. One out of every four paintings you buy should be, et cetera, et cetera. You could, you could take it to ridiculous Well, there's a sensitivity there about the constant importing of American anything. Well, I think... When Canada is a great nation itself. We, we, we unfortunately uh, live in the shadow of the United States. You see, geographically, that's uh, an awfully large shadow uh, under which to fall. And I think that there's a bit of paranoia in, in the industry, to a degree. But I do hear now, I will say this, the rule has definitely uh, been, been at the base of creating much better Canadian records. People are trying harder because they know at least they've got a chance of getting some play. Right. This is Burton Cummings' album, Sweet Sweet, and you're about to hear Mother, Keep Your Daughters In. Yeah. Here's Burton. Keep it. 